Yes, um, good morning, Niger Light. Good morning, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We are here to discuss the uh, issue of insecurity between the good people of Niger State, most especially people living in Rafi and Shururu local government. Today, we have some dignitaries that are going to give us an insight of what is happening in their communities. And the basic fact is that in the recent times, our people have been faced with issue of banditry and kidnapping which has made a life unbearable for them. In the recent times, again, the government and the federal government of Nigeria have tried an effort to see how they can be able to curtail the situation. But it seems that the situation is getting worse and worse every day. Just yesterday, we learned that more people have been kidnapped in the Rafi local government and in Shururu local government. Today, I have Malam Jibrin Abdullahi from, Malam Jibrin Alawa from Alawa community, who can give us an insight of what is happening. And we have Malam Bello Ibrahim from Shururu local government, the Shururu youth movement that can give us more insight on the whole thing. Malam Bello, please, can you introduce yourself more so that people will be able to know what actually you are standing for? Uh, my, my name is uh, Bello Ibrahim, just like you rightly said. And uh, I am a member of the National Youth Council of Nigeria, Stink Tank, Shururu local government chapter. I'm also the co-convener concerned uh, Shiroro youth. Yes, Vanna Jibri Alawa, can you just introduce yourself before we start this? Yes, like you rightly said, my name is Jibri Abdullahi Alawa. I am from Alawa community. I am the Publicity Secretary Alawa Community Development Forum. I am the Secretary Sand Lakma Youth Development Association. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Bello, in the recent times, you can see I've been hearing you people do on the uh, social media and the print media to cry out in respect to insecurity developing with good people of your local government. What is still on ground that uh, we're still hearing that a lot of things have not changed up to today the same thing, the same story, and nothing has been done. Well, uh, our situation is so pathetic, and uh, now we're all resorting to God and prayers, in the sense that uh, this uh, problem has become a recording decimal. And uh, just as you said earlier, we shouldn't dwell on politics. But again, without uh, sounding immodest, the political leadership has not shown the needed will to actually curtail this uh, situation. The attacks goes on every now and then without any commensurate effort to actually check this. The situation is pathetic. It is so bad that uh, the bandits operate without any resistance from the appropriate security forces. Yes, uh, Madam Jibreel Abdullahi, in the recent time again, you can see the Alawa community people in fact, what are, with the information at hand, that virtually more, more than 80% of people have deserted Alawa community. What is actually still happening? Yes, actually what you're saying is right. As it is now, Alawa as a district with so many locals, so many villages have des deserted the villages and all of them virtually all are now staying in Alawa. Because in, it's in Alawa that is only Alawa that has little security along that axis. And if you can look at it, the problem started from Alawa community before it escalated to other places. Okay, actually, now, what's the, is now it shows that now the security presence there has been overwhelmed that the bandit tree really moved within Alawa to the forest to kidnap at the will. That's what you are saying. Yeah. Yes. You see, one cannot longer even go to farm from Alawa because the little security presence there is what is a little bit scaring them away from attacking the main Alawa community. So you can't go out like on Thursday, they attacked Alawa while away with some people, 
in fact, they shot at one person and they repeated it Wednesday, this very Wednesday. As it is, the there is even come, uh, there is negotiation for their ransom now. But this morning, there's a development. The four people they picked on Wednesday, they released one on condition that he is going to bring the the, 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 the ransom for the three of them that are remaining and inclusive of his own. It's a short clarity now that um, the kidnappers are having a field day in Alawa Forest up to the local government and nothing has been doing and done by the government to make sure that this thing has been put to resistance. Yes, up to now nothing has been done. You see, it is that Alawa Games Reserve that is housing the criminals because the forest itself is bordering between um, um, Binungwari in Kaduna State, Kagara, Rafi local government, and Shururu local government. So they have free movement because the, the forest is very thick. It gives them room for free movement and accommodate everybody they kidnap in the forest. And yet, government is here to do anything. Yes, uh, let me turn to Madam Bello. Uh, Madam Bello Ibrahim, in the recent times, you are on TV, radios, and virtually all the media outlets to cry out to the federal government of Nigeria and the state government to come to your aid. But it seems that with all the cries that you guys have been doing, I don't think there is quick response, because if there is a response with what I heard yesterday, as, uh, the security situation is getting deteriorated. What are the efforts that you guys are putting in place more to see how you can be able to check and put the government on toes to make sure that they save your peoples from this uh, menace? Uh, well, one of such efforts is what we are just doing now, to continue to use the media as a means to actually... Uh, make the government know our plight because uh, it is either uh, a lack of the political will like I earlier said or the government feel we are inconsequential we have uh, reached out to the government uh, through the appropriate media we have written to the government we have cried to the government we've explored all possible means to make the government know the problem we are facing but unfortunately the only thing you hear uh, uh, assurances that are more of a propaganda because uh, as we speak, you won't be surprised to hear of another attack again today. The government wait for these attacks to happen. They come on media at sometimes condemning the attacks and it ends there. There has been no really any form of a, a, a serious commitment to actually end this. We have been doing this over and over again and the only thing we get is uh, empty promises. Because uh, what, I, what I mean by empty promises is this. Uh, each time our communities are attacked, the government uh, come on media, condemn the attack. That is in some instances. In some instances, they don't even condemn the attacks. And in all honesty, these attacks are, 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 are actually underreported. Some of this attack goes on, the community will just uh, take solace in God and it ends there. So as to what we are doing, we, have much, we don't have much to do. We'll continue to pray. We we'll continue to explore uh, uh, the, uh, avenues like this, so that we we'll continue to cry to the appropriate authorities, because these are criminals that are that are bearing sophisticated weapons. Only conventional securities can actually curtail this. Tell them, yes. Yeah, my name is Ibrahim. In the, uh, just yesterday, the report at my desk is that people of Rafi were, in fact, Kagara town was attacked. And people were kidnapped freely who allow us this. What actually you guys are doing with Shiroro and Rafi people to make sure that you can resort to, a, in fact, a local security outlet so that you can be able to curtail the situation? Uh, see, the sophistication of uh, these uh, bandits, as it were, is such that they can attack anywhere at will. And I'm saying this with all sense of responsibility. Uh, why Kuta and uh, Zumba, Guada Axis are relatively safe, it is because of that river Kaduna. That is the only thing that is stopping these criminals from attacking places like uh, Kuta. If you look at uh, why they could easily attack uh, Kagara, 
and uh, maybe even make some kidnap is because uh, Pando Gari to Kagara is accessible by road. But you can't yes. come to Kuta, for example, without crossing River Kaduna. So these criminals, they are so sophisticated, they, 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 they can dare the odds. They can attack anywhere at will. And it calls for, for, for concern. It calls for serious concern. I pity the situation in Kagara. Kagara is not as immune as Shiroro by virtue of any sort of a river protecting them. Kuta, yes. Gwada, Zumba have been protected today by that river Kaduna. Take away river Kaduna and I can tell you these people will have attacked Kuta for a very long time because we don't have the security architecture to contempt them. These are people that come in their hundreds, sometimes 100, 200. And I doubt if we have up to 100 policemen in Kuta, for example. And when they come, they shoot sporadically. They dare the odds. Okay. They fear nothing. Okay. They fear nobody because they realize they've been doing this over time without, without any, any resistance. So they feel they can only spear community when they yeah. so will. Not because the government's presence or security presence will deter them. There are instances where community are going into negotiation with these criminals to have a sort of a protection. They call community. Community leaders galvanize resources, pay to the uh, uh, criminals so that the criminals will spare that community. So the case is pathetic. It is pathetic, and nobody seems to be willing to actually help us. Now, what you are telling me now is that um, the community actually are working for bandits because when you work day and night to earn your living, and bandits come overnight and pick you up, they they give them the, all their earnings. At just a blink of an eye. That is one. If, in fact, if, if they, if sometimes they even tell community leaders if, to if gather money so that they will allow them go to farm. They will tell them if, if you want if to farm. <laughs> they, um, they will. They will tell the Yes, they will go ahead tell and the manage the brain. Okay. They will tell the community leaders, if you want to go to farm, you have to bring so-so amount of money so that we will allow you to go to farm and do your farming. And can you imagine that these people, sometimes they will even say, we'll wait for you when you yield what you have so that we will come and take you and then use it as a ransom. So they operate now freely. You are now, now you are telling me now that the community now have been deserted. The bandits yes. are now the community leaders. You see, like now, Kusheriki, for instance, like Kusheriki yeah. community in Rafi local government area in, of Niger State, there was a time they held conversation with the village, with the district head, and they told him he have to organize his people to gather two million naira if they if the people want to farm for this farming season. That they should look for money. When they pay that money, they will allow them to do the, the farm for the rest of the season. So you can see at will, they can come, strike anytime, take away what they want to take away, and then do whatever they want, and then go away at their will. Um, uh, Dele Ibrahim, precisely in Shururu local government, not Rafi now, how many community have been adversely affected by these criminal activities? Well, I want to say, Madam Bello is off. Roughly. Yeah, as I can see, roughly. He's back in, excuse me, it's back online. Excuse me, it's right. back online. I'm referring the question to Madam Bello. Madam Bello, okay. can you tell me how many community have been affected by this criminal activity in the recent times? Well, as at, as at last count, we had a total of uh, 87 communities attacked in about eight political wards in, of Shiro local government alone. That, that is Shiro local government alone. Shiro local government has uh, 15 political wards. And by virtue of uh, River Kaduna splitting the local government into two, we have Lakma Axis and Kuta Axis. Lakma Axis has eight political wards, whereas uh, Kuta Axis has a... Uh, uh, seven political wards. All the eight political wards in Lakma Axis have been attacked. And uh, we have just few communities that have not experienced this form of a banditry attack. But whichever way, all the political wards have been attacked. Now, 
what are you people doing to notify the relevant authority so that they can be able to put in check quickly with this uh, attack, not especially like local government chairman, which is the security officer of the local of the local of the local government. I I am telling I am telling you this authoritatively. The relevant security uh, agencies, uh, government at all level, both uh, local, state, and federal, are very much aware of our plight. I am telling you this authoritatively. We've reached out to them through various means. We've written letters. We've uh, done press conferences. We've been air airing our concerns and reservations on uh, social media platforms. So I, I am telling you this without any form of reservation. All these people are aware of our plight. The military, the, the police, the DSS, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, the Nigerian Immigration Service, all the appropriate authorities are very much aware of our plight. It is, it is just lack of uh, the political will to actually come to our aid. Because one, two things are involved here. If criminals have field days like this, two things are involved. One, it is either uh, we are presuming or thinking Nigeria is already becoming a failed state. Or secondly, there is a sort of conspiracy or lack of political will. It can't be out of this. And uh, in our own case, we, we feel more it is more of a lack of political will. And I will explain what I mean by that. In most instances, when attack hear any condemnation from uh, the federal government for example even at state level sometimes it is only attacks in Rafi local government that attracts the condemnation of the chief of staff and it ends there uh, that of your local government yeah. nobody says anything each time you hear anybody saying anything at all it is we the youth but the political leadership of Shiro itself, nobody rises to the occasion, nobody says anything, and it ends there. So you can see when we talk about a lack of political will and conspiracy, this is what we are talking about. Because one, leadership is all about leading the people. When the people are not there, you lead nobody. But we are being taken for granted. The government are presumed most to be inconsequential, and uh, they are getting away with a lot of things, just as the bandits are also having a field day. Yes, uh, Madam Jibrin, I think you are conversing more with Kagara Andres. Yes. Yes. Yes, because I believe that uh, now um, if you want to go to Alawa, uh, clearly you can, if you pass through Kagara, you can get to Alawa. Now, in Alawa, in Kagara, in Rafiq area, which area did you think are mostly affected with this uh, criminal activity? Well, as I speak to you, well, as I speak to you, between uh, Shororo between local government and Shororo local government, the local government, the communities bordering from Alaw side is Pukoti. Pukoti is part of Alaw district. While um, Madaka is a political mm. ward um, in Rafi local government, is a they are almost in local attached to each other. Yeah. So Madaka is deserted. While Kukochi in Alawa district too is deserted. Because when Kukochi was attacked, at the same time they attacked uh, Madaka. At the same time so they all those areas, uh, all those axes, are, 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 are axes that are attached to Alawa Jones Reserve. We are the criminals are come. So I want to say that Kukochi is the most so affected uh, war in Rafi local government area. Uh, Not of recent, but they area. even moved to the other islands, Ngamba, Oag, Uregi, and Co. Because I learned Uregi is deserted for now. I learned Uregi is deserted for now. Now, in the recent times, there is order by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to send an um, air force to make sure that the bandits are rid out of the community. But it seems that the bandits are still having a market and shops in that community without any resistance from the security agents. What did you call on federal What can you say I will call on federal government to do quickly to see how we can be able to end this menace? You see, Mr. Su. This issue of you this bandit, we are getting tired this bandit because virtually every day we are on this situation. Like Malin Dolo have rightly said, like we've held press conferences, 
We've held several programs. We've written to federal government. In fact, it's something everybody is seeing every day and hearing every day. Well, we'll not be tired. Ours is we want federal government to come and please save our lives. Because virtually every day, these people are killing us. They attack us, kill us, take away whatever we have. You know, putting us, putting our, 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 our people in trauma. So federal government, we believe, still have a role to play. Because the mechanism is in the hand of the government. We can't fight the people. The government must wake up to it. The primary responsibility of protecting the lives and properties of our people. Thank you. Uh, Man of Thank you. Um, in the recent time, we have some communities in some other places that is, community are organizing themselves to police themselves so that they can be able to chase this bandit away. What actually people are doing? In Shuroro local government, we see how we can resuscitate the same thing that other people are doing so that they can be able to be out of this problem. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, wonderful question. I think uh, to start with our struggle without uh, uh, trying to uh, call bluff the effort of uh, virtually, over, uh, uh, virtually every other person, there was a time in Shiro local government, for example, that uh, the vigilante was a near outlawed organization during the days of Lowell Kuali and Co. Our, our struggle oh, gave birth to the revitalization of our vigilante, as it were. And uh, I think uh, so far, so good. There has been a lot of uh, progress in the area of uh, empowering the vigilante. But unfortunately, you know, our political leadership, each time any things come, there will always be this uh, political okay. hanky-panky. I think that is actually affecting the capacity and uh, the capability of uh, the vigilante. But uh, as, what, as to what we are doing, we've been clamoring for the fact that uh, there will be need to inculcate and uh, find a way of actually bringing vigilante to the fore. Because one, these are people that are very much familiar with the terrain. We've been helping in the area of advocacy, and I think it is actually yielding the, uh, the needed result. The government of recent has been able to uh, empower the vigilante. And uh, for some reasons, I will not mention what and what here. Good enough, because they are still like... Uh, infrastructure, sorry to say, that was given to them to actually uh, ch checkmate this. But again, even vigilante, they should they should be seen as a, a sort of a supportive uh, 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 defense mechanism. mechanism. The conventional security forces should actually lead the war, whereas the vigilante should only support. But instances where vigilantes are exposed, you have a vigilante that is using then gun, uh, confronting an armed bandit that will come with a, a uh, RPG, machine gun, AK-47, AK-49. You know, this is already a suicide mission. But when you have conventional military forces leading the war, whereas it's, uh, the vigilante will give a co complementary assistance in area of uh, uh, intelligence gathering, they will help in uh, giving direction as to how the terrain is, will achieve more successes. But as it is, vigilante cannot confront these guys. And that is a fact. That is a fact. Vigilantes cannot adequately uh, confront these guys. Yes, uh, Madam Bello, in the recent times too, I can uh, get vividly that uh, even the security have, uh, have faced some casualty in the recent times. We lost some military guys, some police and some other vigilantes. Now, what did you think we can do now, both the military and the community? We settle down and think and brainstorm on how we can be able to get rid of all this. I think we have been an advocate for a stakeholders meeting where issues will be looked at holistically. First of all, I think uh, we have expressed our condolences to some of the military and police officers that were killed as a result of uh, this uh, banditry. Uh, vigilantes have been killed as well. Innocent civilians have been killed. Women have been killed and what have you. 
I think at uh, this material time, we need to actually convey a stakeholders meeting so that we'll have a sort of a local security summit. We have security experts in the local government. We have retired GIG, DIG. We have a serving uh, military uh, major general. We have colonels. We have a senior high-ranking uh, retired military police and other paramilitary officers that have carved a niche for themselves during the days of their service. These are experts that actually can give direction as to how we can end this. But again, you can't do this outside the cycle of our political leadership. As much as you yes. will want to help, you can't do that on your own. And that is why we've been hyping on the political leadership to please give room. Because at the end of the day, if the successes are recorded, whoever is the political leader at this time will take the credit. But again, you have to bring in, 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 in people that are experts in this field. Because... I can tell you, my my brother, uh, Shuroro, at the moment, we are faced with a particular sad reality. People operating in isolation, the political leadership operating in isolation. There is no cohesion. There is no cohesion and cross fertilization of ideas. People wanting to be local champions, and that is our greatest undoing at this time. There has been no any deliberate attempt to actually bring people on roundtable so that we look at these issues critically. We have situation where, by some political leaders, believe they know it all and they can do it all alone and this is this is a whole this so uh madam jubin i think we are out from uh madam in the vine yes the, um, the, now, maybe now in it seems of, In terms of health care, to give an immediate attention to the victims, what do you think the government is doing to give an emergency attention to the victims? Is the government or the state government, is it doing its own part as to protect and give a life to the citizens? You see... In this aspect, we had a lot of issues. There was a time somebody was shot, and the family were left with the responsibility of taking care of that. Somebody was shot, and the family were left with responsibility of taking care of that. All healthcare facilities are around these affected places all now. You can't find somebody who is not an indigent working on all those healthcare facilities now because. At least they are not from that place, and there are each, uh, security issues like this, they will just leave. So, we have these issues the healthcare facilities there are understaffed because of the present condition. And the vigilantes we are talking about sometimes, some people sacrifice their lives for this humanitarian job. And mm. once they are hit, it becomes a problem to the family to even take care of that health challenge. Take so this has been the issue, challenge. and the government is not forthcoming this in this aspect. And government is not that is why Malin is saying there is, there is a kind of inconsistency from the government. Because all these challenges are supposed because to be considered. All these challenges are supposed to be considered. So this is part of the health this sector. While education has its own, our children who have fled their communities are now out of school. And the schools are not more at their disposal. So that also is a problem to us. That also is a problem to us. Now, what you are telling me now is that uh, most of the primary health care or general hospital, in, especially in those areas, have been overwhelmed that the staff there cannot be able to take care of these people when they are attacked. Yes, of course. Yes, you know that all those places are um, political world or district, let me say, and they are managed by primary health care. Some of the primary health care staffs are not from those communities, like Alawa, for instance. Like Alawa, for instance. So somebody who is not an indigenous cannot even retire there and work there for now because of the security challenges. And the little we have cannot even take care of the clinics because there is much influence from, from the displaced communities. Now, in the day, we have some few minutes to wrap, wrap up this program. 
Now, what is your advice for the state government to do quickly, or the federal government to do quickly to, or the federal government to do quickly to? Well, my advice for the state, well, for both the state and federal the government, state is that we should work up with accountability. These are innocent people that voted them, and they promised they took an oath to protect them. For now, they have failed. For now, because they have failed. They have, these people are exposed to attacks, they have, this being killed every day. Being in fact, every day. They, they, they have been subjected to, they, they, they to, to been a lot of hardship, undeserved hardship. So go federal government and state government to work up to its responsibility and please provide much security to protect the lives and properties of the people. Uh, Marlon Bello, please, your last word so that we can be able to wrap, wrap up this program. Your last uh, 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 comments, please. Sorry. Your last uh, 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 comments, please. Sorry. The government so that uh, they will adequately man uh, a law against reserve. The government should establish a military three base in a uh, Shururu uh, axis that will adequately take care of uh, of uh, Kaduna state. Uh, and uh, I think, I think uh, going further, uh, actually know what is actually happening because it is only a fool that does the same thing every day and expect a different result. As mm -hmm. it is, the government have been hyping on this strategy and it is not working. I think we need to look inwards. The government should not trust as those that are fronting themselves as um, Mr. Saibi, I can do it and do this, this and that. The government should look inward and actually find a way of dealing with these issues directly. Thank you very much. Um, I think next time we'll get to get Thank you guys again much, uh, so that we discuss extensively we on insecurity so between your people in your community. Uh, Nigelite, as in you can see, or the, the, the uh, people of Nigeria, Nigeria, you can see our community have been ravaged this recently. And that is why we get to reach out to the people there so that we can get a first information. We are calling on the relevant authority to do something quickly so that we can escalate this situation. Right now, yesterday, in Rafiloka government, we lost about more than four people to banditry attacks. Now, we don't know the next community. Now, the federal government and state government have to sit down and save the situation and so that we can be able to live peacefully. God bless Niger State. God bless Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. God bless Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you.